Well, I grew up in Brownsville. I grew up on the east side, not far from uh, what used to be Lincoln Park. I attended schools basically all over Brownsville and graduated from Porter in 1982. At the time, I didn't have any specific plans as to college or a career or anything like that. So I ended up enrolling in Texas Southmost College. Basically all the necessary courses that, that I needed. There are three experiences that come to mind with my time here at, at Texas Southmost College. One definitely was working for the uh, school newspaper. Another experience, I took an earth science course. We took a uh, trip to Big Bend. And it sounds kind of corny, but it was kind of an enlightening experience. The one experience that had sort of a influence on me was a class I took in uh, sociology, and this was with Tony Savaleta. We became friends, and he was a mentor to me for years and years and years. I was you know, part of the first generation in my family to attend college. To have someone take an interest in what I was doing it was just something that made me feel as though you know, I could do some of the things that I was thinking I might be capable of. It was a wonderful way to have that college experience still be very much at home and to grow into this other phase of my life. One day I, I, I did go to the mailbox and there was this letter and I, I opened it and it said, congratulations, you've been admitted into the University of Texas at Austin. And when I arrived, I, I think I, I understood how serious this was and the great opportunity I had and how those two years at Texas Southmost College had, pre had prepared me for that. And so if I could use that foundation there in, in, in Austin sort of to help me study and help me do all the things I needed to do to, to get through the courses that I would be fine if I could just stay grounded in that way. I graduated in the spring of 1987 and I decided that I would go to Minneapolis. I found myself telling people about Brownsville. I would go out with friends, and we'd go out for drinks afterwards, and I'd tell a story or two about Brownsville. And then I'd, you know, after having hogged up the, the conversation for a good while, I said, well, you know, I'd sort of quiet it down, and they'd say, no, 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 we'll buy more beer, keep, ta keep talking. And when I moved back to Austin, I kept doing that with, with this new group of friends. But the next day, I was at a, at a coffee shop, and I was just, I was curious if I could write what I had just told them the night before. And so I ended up just sort of writing on a legal pad and I wrote this story and it went probably four or five pages. And I read it and I, you know, I had a good time writing it and I thought, eh, this isn't bad. I also, at that point, sort of realized that while I didn't have the sort of traditional literary background, I'd had a very strong literary experience through an oral tradition. And I'd grown up with these two uncles, my tío Héctor and my uh, tío Nico who were basically master storytellers and they would come over to the house and weave these tales that just had me engrossed. I mean, it was, it was the thing that I came inside the house for, it was the thing that I turned the TV off for and I could hear the same story over and over again. At some point, and I don't know when exactly this happened, but I just sort of crossed that line and decided, hey, what, what if I could do this? And I was spending all my time doing this, all, all my free time. I was getting up at five in the morning and writing. I was writing in hotel rooms or at the airport. I was just sort of obsessed with it. And after about five months, I thought, you know, um, I'm just gonna take a shot at it. In early 98, I, uh, I was a free man to sit down and, and do what I told everyone I was gonna do, which was the, the scariest day of my life. I spent that year and a half after advertising, basically staying at home and uh, writing. And at the same time, I had been considering graduate school and ended up deciding to go to the University of Iowa. I came out of there in uh, the spring of 2001, found a job at, uh, at UT San Antonio teaching freshman composition. I was also trying to finish this book, my, my first book. Here again, I was writing at three and four in the morning, and I came to realize how difficult it was only after I was in it. My family certainly didn't know 
what I had subjected myself to. <laughs> My first book, Brownsville, came out in 2003. I spent the next couple of months traveling sort of on a book tour for the release and decided, well, I'm going to move back to Brownsville for a while and I'll just sort of decide what I'm going to do next and I'll start working on my next book. So I ended up going to UT Austin fall of 2004. By that point I had spent a fair amount of time already researching what would become my second book, my novel, and it came out in 2009. The experience of having grown up here influences everything that occurs to me. It all gets filtered through that. I hope I never stop writing about this place. I want to think that it's part of sort of my, my creative DNA. Any success that I've had is in large part, if not entirely, because of where I came from and those values that I took with me. I have no, no doubt about that. Some of those were, were things I picked up at home and some of the things were I just picked up living in this community, going to schools here, going to this college that made me who you know, the person I am now. The question was, was I going to apply those experiences? Do you take what you have and do you find a place for it? And I've, I've been you know, blessed in that way. Thank you.